Hello, this is Gerald Johan van Waas and uh, the educational ch channel of uh, demonstrations that are related with the theory sounding form also to be found in the uh, volume one uh, version, the development of the word. Um, what I explain in there is that the letters and letter combinations in words do have a meaning and you can uh, recognize them, you can learn them, you can see how they are interrelated and also how they influence each other so that they can, they really describe the words how they are intended to be. Unconsciously we deal with them, with these uh, features and I'll try the next few the couple of videos I will try to make it as simple as possible it's not easy because some of the combinations of words uh, have reference pawn points that are really going into a whole frame of associations that we deal with and uh, that uh, when you analyze them it could go to a, a rather large complication if you deal with all the elements, the elements of time, the elements of space and so on. But I'll make them as simple as possible in these videos. Uh, here I will demonstrate some of the prepositions uh, that uh, are used very often in our language. So they are also in a way very simple. They are connections or connection points that are rather si simple as well. So they should be Visual, uh, visualized very simple as well and they should be understood uh, very easily as well and I will compare them with how they are uh, uh, shown as forms how they are orientating themselves as forms in uh, the following way I'll start with in and on you have the e here the, so this the insertion most of the time of something new the context of the e is that of uh, reorganization so it's the end of a cycle where you can say okay i have a new idea let's uh, uh, let's uh, put that in and make that fit that's the background idea the form itself is is nothing more than that and but it all is always like a projection uh, that you use where you use the word so in these prepositions, of course, I will use an object of projection and then I will add the, the letters and letter combinations. So if I use E with N, I will immediately come into in this combination inside the object. The O as the, in the context of the O, it is an environment around an object where a lot of processes can occur that still are related with the, the object that's the context the form itself is easy it is you can use it as also the surrounding space in relation in in relation of the form that you use in in and it is used here in an object of projection so when i add the n i will get the right pink point where I will add the connection point and that is on an object. If you have some doubt about the position of the end, the position of the end in my theory it says it's not in the middle, it is always in the reference point uh, somewhere in the volume of things. In this combination of O with, with N onto an object or projection you come at uh, to the right point automatically the mind makes it uh, most easy so if you simply combine these letters as uh, puzzle frames and use them in the right order you come immediately to the right point of projection that's what we do with these words we project them we will project them onto here the objects of projection on the right positions this means that in will land inside not because the word says so but also because the letters as a meaning an underlying meaning as an e or an n uh, go to a certain position in a certain way and there's almost no other option that the e plus the n goes inside the object of projection why the o with the environment with the n 
into uh, the position of the volume where it is, you get on top of the object of projection. Different with an or an, uh, the, these words are used like in German and in Dutch. These are also slightly variations of, of the of the word combinations, but in this as also as prepositions. An will be automatically also near the object of projection, so it is close by. Why an with a larger a? It will it is closing in, coming closer, and it is also uh, getting uh, uh, closer to an attachment towards that object of projection. Over is, uh, that's a little bit longer word, uh, with more letters. It's also the object of projection you can see here. And you have the V which changes position. And the R is the uh, we have to land in in a uh, in an objective uh, point of reference. The R is always a reorganization point. That's the context, the reorganization point in in time somewhere. So so means it compares uh, two positions: a position where it comes from and where it goes to, and and how it can go to the other position. That you can that you can read in the theory in the book that I uh, have. So the over is the kind of bridging, the crossing to towards a new point, also in time. Up, you have the u, the uh, the what is lying uh, beneath. In the, the context, is it that this what is lying beneath or below is still forming itself, it's open, it is still in progress and so on. The P is the other way around, it's the pressing out of what comes outer process of something new. So up is actually, as a symbol, I have the two different positions and in combination uh, you come to a position which is also going uh, up, as you can have as a reference. You can design it differently and so on, but you can already understand it by simply taking these two puzzle pieces and make them yeah, change towards each other. You can do that differently as well, but you can already understand it by this simple putting together of the puzzle pieces. Then you have under, under then also, you can have the U, the, the, the N and the D, uh, on top and then of again the context of the R the context of the R puts uh, all, uh, with and it is already inside pressed inside and so on with under you come also into this organization field of context that makes uh, something uh, in a position uh, it has already the position of under it is an association I know it's a derived association but it's helpful, just make the puzzle and already come easily to the correct point of reference where the words are projecting your mind into. Even if it is not 100% already what it could be, I just show you that it's very easily, if you put them in the right order, read the theory just slightly or just check my videos and you know the positions after a while, which positions, which forms you can use for it. And in the right position, the right order, you come to it, and your your mind easily goes into the right direction. After is more more difficult. Uh, the first sketch of this, and why it is more difficult, it is there are different letters in different that goes in different direction. The R is what is gradually becoming. So the beginning of after is what is already gradually becoming. It's even more like that. The F is it's dispersed into the different directions. What is gradually becoming? Where I will try to find a distinctive uh, point of reference with elements that I can use. The uh, so it's this, the distinctive elements should come out, and these elements that are gradually becoming 
will be given the context in R. So it will, given, uh, will be given an order onto a time frame. So basically, I'll put them a bit, bit closer together. And I will can uh, experience them already as some residue. It's gradually becoming. We try to get some elements out and it out of the process and this out of a process in time and so on and so on. So, so the first part of is the reference part to, to all the things that are gradually becoming and the R at the end is like the after effects in the process. That's what is let's say written down into the letter meanings and combinations and you can read them in that way and you can understand them in a different way on a different level and with different applications if you would like to this is just an example uh, try to if you try to make uh, uh, designs or so on that follows these rules Try to make them as simple as possible. That's not easy uh, uh, because uh, mind is easily distracted and uses uh, elements that you remember that are not exactly from what is being said and being directed. So it is not an easy task to always do that correctly. But there are a lot of uh, guidance that I uh, have in my book. And even if you don't work very correctly or sketchy like I did here. The point is that you easily uh, after a while will realize what the reference points are referring to and how they combine, and how they are direct into a certain direction so that you can read the letters and letter combinations differently so that makes that they make sense. Oh yes, this after is, is also about a process that is already going on and I try to get something out of it that I can use. That is the after effect. You can read in the letter combinations in the meaning of letters. Not, not much more than that. Anyhow, I hope this was also helpful and useful to understand letters and letter combinations differently as you, as you normally do in daily life. This method is used for well, several purposes, but it's also used as a, as a method to make you more conscious of the interactions that are not just happening in our mind, but there are, the, these letters have a foundation that is part of something that is uh, has a, natu a sort of natural order. Here I didn't say anything about the natural order, the order uh, the order itself is more described in this development of the word, but that's for some other time. There is a whole uh, structure behind it that gradually changes its features and it makes logical and it makes a logical sense to uh, see the letters in the right order of references as they are in a numerical system as well. That you can see how they build up. That's not something for new for now. What I explained here was simply an association to as a teaser, let's say, that you can understand letters and letter combination differently as forms in the context and as letter combinations context themselves as well. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.